music wears itself out and the thing dies down and plunks to a stop. Hey, how about you eating some of this? Take it away. In assembling the cast for the 1945 movie The Lost Weekend, the casting process was meticulous. For the role of the struggling writer, Don Burnham, the filmmakers sought an actor with depth and emotional range eventually selecting Ray Milland after a series of auditions where he convincingly portrayed the character's inner turmoil. Jane Wyman was chosen for the role of Don's supportive girlfriend Helen after demonstrating excellent chemistry with Milland during screen tests, capturing the essence of their complicated relationship. For the pivotal role of Nat, the understanding bartender, the director was impressed by Howard De Silva's authentic portrayal in his audition, showcasing the character's empathy and wisdom. Lastly, Doris Dowling was cast as Gloria, a woman caught in Don's destructive spiral, her performance during auditions revealing her ability to bring complexity and vulnerability to the character. Throughout the casting process, key moments such as chemistry tests, emotional depth in auditions, and the ability to embody the complexity of the characters were crucial in defining the roles of this classic. Each actor brought a unique element to the film, contributing to its lasting impact and critical acclaim. There's no hole in the wall, Don. Yes, there is. No, there is. Yes. Don, please look. The director of the 1945 movie The Lost Weekend, Billy Wilder, had a clear vision for the film aiming to depict the destructive nature of alcoholism realistically. Wilder drew inspiration from his own experiences and observations, infusing the story with raw emotions and gritty realism. His filmmaking style involved using innovative techniques to convey the protagonist's descent into addiction, such as flashbacks and subjective camera shots, creating a deeply immersive experience for the audience. Collaborating closely with the cast, and crew Wilder pushed for authentic performances, guiding actors to delve deep into their characters' struggles. The director's meticulous attention to detail and uncompromising approach to storytelling contributed to the film's critical acclaim and lasting impact on cinema. Brother said not to sell you anything even if you did have the money to pay for it. But well, I can't stop anybody coming. The movie The Lost Weekend is filled with funny, shocking, and sad facts. So keep watching to learn more. Do you have a cherished memory associated with this film? What enduring qualities do you think make it an everlasting symbol of the industry? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. No. Hey, hey, you changed. During the production of the 1945 movie The Lost Weekend, the set design was meticulously crafted to replicate the gritty atmosphere of a man's descent into alcoholism. Filming took place on location in New York City, adding a sense of authenticity to the dark narrative. Logistical challenges arose due to the need for detailed sets that reflected the protagonist's struggles with addiction. Innovative techniques included using lighting and shadows to convey the emotional turmoil of the main character, creating a visual representation of his inner demon. Despite the challenges faced, the production team's dedication to capturing the raw essence of addiction resulted in a powerful and impactful film that stands the test of time. What? What's too many and a hundred's not enough? The film presents a deep exploration of addiction, focusing on a man's struggle with alcoholism over a weekend. The main character, Don Burnham, is portrayed as a troubled writer who tries to navigate his life amid overwhelming urges to drink. This classic showcases the emotional turmoil and physical decline associated with addiction, capturing the raw pain and desperation that can accompany such a battle. The depiction of his downward spiral serves not just as entertainment, but as a profound commentary on the human condition and the challenges of seeking redemption. As Don grapples with his desires, the movie skillfully highlights his relationships with those around him, emphasizing the strain that addiction places on love and trust. The performances from the cast add depth to the narrative, making the viewer empathize with the character's plight. The film uses sharp cinematography and clever storytelling techniques, enhancing the feeling of entrapment 
that often accompanies addiction. By illustrating the consequences of his choices, it urges viewers to consider the broader implications of substance abuse and the struggle for recovery. This artful portrayal makes it clear that the journey through addiction is complex and fraught with obstacles. The film stands as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of overwhelming adversity, leaving viewers with much to ponder regarding the nature of dependency and hope. Now don't forget quarter of six. My brother must find me home ready and back. The music in The Lost Weekend plays a crucial role in enhancing the film's narrative and emotional tone. Composers and musicians worked diligently to create a soundtrack that would complement the movie's themes and atmosphere. Through melodic motifs and evocative compositions, the music heightens the viewer's emotional connection to the characters and the story. The use of different instruments, tempos, and dynamics helps to establish the mood and tension in various scenes, reflecting the struggles depicted in the film. Musicians carefully crafted each note to resonate with the audience enhancing the impact of the movie's powerful narrative. Their dedication and creativity brought depth and resonance to the film, making The Lost Weekend a truly unforgettable cinematic experience. What kind of a party was that you asked me to? A cocktail party. Invitation still stand? Of course, come on. Filming at New York's Bellevue Hospital was a first for any film crew. Frank Phelan, known for his role in Dobie Gillis, starred in a radio adaptation alongside Ray Milhand and Jane Wyman. The Screen Guild Theater broadcasted this adaptation on January 7, 1946. I thought she was going away for the weekend. The most iconic scenes from The Lost Weekend showcase the director's skill in conveying the protagonist's struggles with alcoholism. In one scene, the lead actor's performance captures the raw emotions of addiction drawing the audience into his downward spiral. The cinematography expertly portrays the chaos and despair of his struggles, immersing viewers in the character's world. Filmmakers and actors have praised these scenes for their realism and impact, highlighting the importance of accurately depicting such a serious issue. The director's vision and the actor's dedication elevate these moments to unforgettable pieces of cinema that resonate with audiences long after the film ends. Oh, shut up. You should have seen her come in here last night looking for you, her eyes all rainy and the mascara all white. Filming for this classic took place in New York City for outdoor scenes and in Hollywood for indoor shots, where a precise replica of a Third Avenue bar was created. Ray Millahan, a lead actor, shared an anecdote about a nostalgic visitor on set. He was the first performer to win both a Cannes Film Festival Award and an Oscar for his role in the movie. Another key figure, Jane Wyman, starred in three Oscar Best Picture nominees in consecutive years, with this show winning. Come on, that breakdown, will you? You know what I'm going to call my novel? The movie, The Lost Weekend, had a significant cultural and social impact when it was released in 1945. This classic film resonated with audiences by shedding light on the serious issue of alcoholism. It portrayed the struggles of the main character, Don Burnham, in a raw and a realistic manner, showing the devastating effects of addiction on an individual and those around them. The film's portrayal of alcoholism sparked discussions about mental health, addiction, and the importance of seeking help. It brought attention to a topic that was often taboo and not openly discussed in that era. The Lost Weekend also influenced pop culture by shaping how alcoholism was depicted in movies and television shows that followed. It set a standard for exploring such complex issues with depth and sensitivity. Furthermore, The Lost Weekend contributed to societal awareness of the need for support systems and treatment options for those battling addiction. It highlighted the importance of compassion and understanding towards individuals struggling with alcoholism, emphasizing that it is a disease that requires empathy and professional help. The movie challenged stereotypes and helped to break down stigma surrounding addiction and mental health issues. In conclusion, The Lost Weekend left a lasting impact on both culture and society by bringing attention to the realities of alcoholism 
and humanizing those affected by it. It paved the way for more open discussions on difficult topics and encouraged empathy and support for individuals facing similar challenges. A gentleman came in a while ago. How much did you give him for that coat? Why? Well, I want it back. It's my coat. In this classic Philip Terry, who is very nearsighted, wore his own glasses with prescription lenses. James Milliken, a familiar face in Oscar-winning films, appeared in two Best Picture winners and four nominees, showcasing his talent. Post-winning the Academy Award, Ray Mayan featured in a spoof on The Jack Benny Show, portraying an alcoholic alongside Jack Benny, with Phil Harris providing comic relief as a band leader trying to reform them. The amusing scene featuring DT visions of animals brought humor, with Ray jokingly using his Oscar to chase them away. The Lost Weekend, a 1945 film, was met with critical acclaim upon its release. Reviewers praised the movie for its realistic portrayal of alcoholism and the powerful performance by lead actor Ray Mullane. Audiences resonated with the film, connecting with its themes of addiction and redemption. The movie was awarded four Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director. These accolades highlighted the exceptional craftsmanship and impact of The Lost Weekend. For those involved in the film, such recognition affirmed their talent and dedication to creating a thought-provoking piece of cinema that continues to be celebrated for its authenticity and emotional depth. James, you're working on the Time magazine, and you're his best girl. I also know... In 1949, Jane Wyman became the 32nd recipient of the Best Actress Oscar at the 21st Academy Awards for her role in Johnny Belinda. Having met Ronald Reagan on the set of Brother Rat in 1938, they married in 1940, but later divorced in 1949, remaining amicable until Reagan passed away in 2004. Wyman showed support by voting for Reagan in the 1980 and 1984 presidential election. On an episode of Jane Wyman Presents the Fireside Theater in 1955, she crossed paths with Fernando Lamas father of Lorenzo Lamas, who later starred alongside her in Falcon Crest after persistently auditioning for the role. Persistence paid off for Lorenzo, securing him the part. Please. Dad, won't you let me in? I know you're there. Please open the During the making of the movie, the cast and crew faced challenges due to the dark themes of alcoholism portrayed in the film. Actor Ray Mullane, who played the lead role, immersed himself in the character and even visited Bellevue Hospital for research. The director, Billy Wilder, employed innovative techniques like using double exposures to depict the protagonist's hallucination. The film's realistic portrayal of addiction led to some tension on set, but it ultimately contributed to the movie's authenticity. Behind the scenes, the team worked tirelessly to bring this powerful story to life, resulting in a cinematic classic that continues to resonate with audiences today. Ray Mealand expressed frustration about laws that restricted alcohol sales on Sundays, known as Blue Laws, a regulation that New York still uphold. Howard Da Silva, an original member of the group theater, which formed in 1931, showcased his talent in this classic. Billy Wilder made history by winning Academy Awards for Best Director and Best Screenplay in this film. These notable aspects added depth and excellence to the movie. The Lost Weekend, a 1945 movie, holds a significant place in film history for its raw portrayal of alcoholism. Its impact on future filmmaking can be seen in how it tackled taboo subjects with honesty and depth. The movie inspired a wave of psychological dramas that delved into complex human emotions and struggles. Its use of innovative narrative techniques influenced filmmakers to experiment with storytelling methods. The Lost Weekend's legacy lives on in the exploration of addiction, mental health, and the human condition in cinema. You couldn't talk me out of you. I was the only one that really understood you. I knew there was a core of something. Well, there is a core. And During the post-war period, the movie had a significant impact on returning GIS struggling with PTSD using alcohol. 
Jean Arthur declined the role of Helen St. James. Billy Wilder, after reading the book, quickly secured the film rights with his writing partner, believing it would be a groundbreaking depiction of alcoholism on screen. That's my coach you've got. That's fine, thank heaven. They mixed up the checks. You certainly did. I thought you'd never come. Well, you couldn't have waited so long. In the lost weekend, Barnum took a therapeutic walk up Third Avenue, covering about four miles round trip from his East Village apartment to Nats. This classic film is one of two Ray Millinan movies that tackle alcoholism and features Jane Wyman, wife of Ronald Reagan. At its first public showing in Santa Barbara, the intense scenes evoked laughter from the audience, leading to mixed opinions on the film, with some finding it too distasteful or tedious. Billy Wilder's powerful portrayal of alcoholism left some patrons swearing off, not just drinking, but movies altogether. Despite its initial reception, The Lost Weekend went on to be regarded as a poignant exploration of addiction and its effects. I hid one of them. I've still got it. I'm a capitalist now. I'm In 1972, the show The New Dick Van Dyke Show referenced this classic, unaware of Dick Van Dyke's personal struggles with alcohol, a role that Ray Melhan hesitated to take on, doubting his and director Billy Wilder's ability. The film's significance led to its inclusion in the United States National Film Registry. That's fine, thank heaven. They mixed up the checks. You certainly did. I thought you'd never come. Well, you couldn't have waited so long. Ray Mealand initially questioned his ability to take on the role. But with encouragement from his wife and the success of the filmmakers, he decided to star in the film. Despite winning the Best Actor Oscar, he chose not to give an acceptance speech. Jane Wyman, a close friend of Aaron Spelling, appeared in his TV shows, showcasing her versatility as an actress. Maybe. Nonsense. If anybody goes, Helen's your girl. There's something in that, Don. And what in the 1956, Jane Wyman left Warner Brothers after 19 years to work on Jane Wyman Presents, the Fireside Theater. Warren Zevin referenced the typewriter scene in his song Carmelita. But the song is about heroin, not alcohol. In 1969, Frank Phelan's character in it's a Wonderful Life inspired the Muppet Ernie on Sesame Street. Don, no, let me get it over with. Oh, you want me to give you another one of my promises that I never keep? I don't want you to give me... Don finding 10 in the sugar bowl in the movie would be like finding 160 today. Miklos Rosa earned Oscar nominations for both this film and Spellbound in 1945. Despite using a theremin in both scores, Spellbound took home the award. David O. Selznick once considered legal action against the instrument's use in the movie. Jane Wyman received the Charles B. Harding Award in 1977, the top honor from the Arthritis Foundation. Figure out. The Lost Weekend is a classic film from 1945. Jane Wyman, a prominent actress, appeared in every episode of Jane Wyman Presents the Fireside Theater in 1955 and received two Emmy nominations. Howard De Silva starred in the notable unit 891 production of Mark Blitzstein's The Cradle, Will Rock in 1964. The movie is one of the 700 Paramount productions made between 1929, 1949, 1949, 1958 for TV distribution. It was released on DVD on February 6, 2001, and has since been occasionally shown on Turner Classic Movies. Keep close on Young Kippa, and we don't open on St. Patrick's. That's a good joke. Ray Millian stands out as one of four actors to win Best Actor at both the Oscars and Cannes Film Festival for the same performance, a feat matched by John Voight, William Hurt, and Jane Dujardin. In New York City, an elaborate location shot was unexpectedly disrupted when a girl ran into view to get Ray Millan's autograph. Jane Wyman, alongside John Mills and Patty Duke, claimed an Oscar without speaking, showcasing remarkable talent in their respective films. But they could be worse. After all, you're not an embezzler or a murderer. You drink too much. 25 years after his role in The Great Gatsby, Howard De Silva played Meyer Wolfsheim in The Great Gatsby. This classic was the first film Billy Wilder won Oscars for in his career, later winning four more. Jane Wyman is one of five actresses who won an Oscar for playing a labor role in films like Johnny Belinda, joining the likes of Louis Reiner, Mary Astor, Kim Hunter, and Brenda Fricker in this achievement.
Have you watched The Lost Weekend and felt its impact on you? Share your thoughts and experiences with us. How did this classic movie influence your view of cinema? Let's engage with likes, shares, and subscriptions for more cinematic explorations. Or would it work with him in Philadelphia and me in New York? Don't ever.